This is Pittsburgh Steelers Talk by Chat Sports, and the month-long like race is almost over here, and we are still trailing our Eagles channel by around and be nice 350 here. So we have a chance, but we are almost out of time to catch up to our Eagles channel. Also, the Browns are starting to gain some ground on us despite their chaos at the quarterback position. So help us out. Like today's video right now. Today's episode of Pittsburgh Steelers Talk is presented by Aura. They offer all-in-one digital safety for you and your whole family. And they're giving you a free 14-day trial when you head over to Aura.com slash chat sports. It's a free trial. Cancel anytime on their all-in-one online safety tool. It is, of course, a quiet portion of the NFL calendar, but this is pretty interesting and ties into Pittsburgh. Le'Veon Bell and Adrian Peterson going to throw a little exhibition boxing match here. Bell versus Peterson, July 30th. Le'Veon is the early favorite right now at minus 180 in the exhibition bo boxing match as the two former NFL running backs. At this point, we can say former if you're doing a boxing match in July. Kind of feel like you're not going to make your return to the NFL, but I digress. We'll spend some time on this and have a little fun tale of the tape, thanks to producer Jeremy. What's your one-word reaction to this fight? Cool? Boring? Lame? Lots of different routes you can go. Let me know what you think in the comments. My one word is, I'm going to be honest here, kind of smells like desperation to me. Uh, makes me wonder how much money these two guys really have set aside because eh, there'll be a little bit here, but... These guys were very successful NFL backs. I'm not sure they should need to do it for the money, and I'm not a big boxing guy myself. But we do know how the metrics stack up here. The tail of the tape. Bell has the age advantage. 30 against 37, although I do think Adrian Peterson might be the most in-shape human in of any 37-year-old in maybe history. That dude is unbelievable. Both 6'1", listed sizes there. The listed weights, knowing... Well, we'll see what they actually weigh in at, since they'll be not in NFL shape. 225 for Bell, 220 for Peterson, so he's got the weight, the youth, the reach, though, in favor of Adrian Peterson. 33.75 against 31.5 inches there. The hand size, not that it matters too much, in favor of Lev Bell. Le'Veon Bell is the favorite, and youth does matter in this context. The real note I wanted to make about Adrian Peterson, I was barred from saying on YouTube. The real might be able to figure out what I'm implying there and his past and etc. but I wasn't allowed to say it. I was told by my bosses. So I'm going to go with Lev Bell in the end, despite Peterson having some... Um, I'm just going to go with history and leave it at that. Who do you have winning the fight, though? Type in LB for Lev Bell, or AD for Adrian Peterson. Producer Jeremy keeps calling him AP. It's not his nickname. You're wrong, my guy. So you can type in LB, AD, or AP if you want to be wrong on that third one. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. If the ad break comes on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know who you got winning that fight at the end of July. Bleacher Report has suggested one particular corner the Steelers should go out and sign to add to some of their depth at the position. Here was their argument as to why corner is an area of need. Pittsburgh's secondary has already gotten much better this offseason after they signed Levi Wallace to a two-year, $8 million deal. He will be one of the Steelers' starting cornerbacks. They also have Akella Witherspoon, Justin Lane, and Cam Sutton back in the fold. If cornerback is going to be among the team's top positions of strength, though, then they may want to add one more via free agency, and there are still some solid performers on the market. Couple of notes on that. First off, Akella Witherspoon's cornerback one. I think we almost all agree with that. The idea of a guy getting $4 million per year and Levi Wallace being a locked and loaded starter you know, isn't actually all that accurate, I think. Oh, by the way, Justin Lane being included, he played 28 defensive snaps. He's not a key piece in any capacity on defense. Special teams? Sure. Now, I am open to adding help at corner. That's something we've talked about many a time in the past here on this show, and I am down to explore various veteran options. We'll take an in-depth look at who Bleacher Report thinks the Steelers should go out and sign, 
But first, today's show is presented by Aura. They offer financial fraud protection, identity theft protection, and online and device security for you and your whole family. Plus, family plans up to five people. You can shop, bank, and work online more safely and pride, which is important because... We spend more time online than ever. So go get your free 14-day trial started at Aura.com slash chat sports. I'll put that link in the comment section and the description of today's video. I'll also make note, by the way, that you can cancel that free trial at any time. Xavier Rhodes next up here. That is who Bleach Report suggested the Steelers go sign in free agency to add some more help to the cornerback room, and I get it. Rhodes, I think, is one of the better corners who's available on the open market. Kind of briefly saved his career in Indy in 2020, but also wasn't as good in 2021. He was targeted 61 times, allowed a 60.7% completion rate, 510 yards, a little on the higher side for what you would prefer there. Seven pass breakups and one INT all in 13 games played. He was a pro bowler in 2019, I believe, his last year with Minnesota, which was a joke. He was horrible that year. The Vikings could not move on from him fast enough after that season. But he has kind of extended his career a little bit. And as a depth piece, sure. I got no problem with that. I think Rhodes is not a premier corner anymore. But if he's your backup CB3 on the outside, if they do play Sutton at nickel like I think they will, I've got no complaints in any capacity there. So what do you think when it comes to the Steelers signing Xavier Rhodes? Should they go do it? Simple question, Y for yes or N for no. While you're in the comments section answering Y or N, make sure you've hit that big red button and you're subscribed. If the Steelers make a move, as we've done in the past, we will break it down for you. So if you haven't already, hit that big red button and join us for even more Steelers coverage right here on Steelers Talk. Another free agent corner, this time though, under contract with a different league, but for NFL purposes is a free agent. That's Channing Stribling, who has looked very impressive in the USFL. He was arguably the best free agent or best corner in the USFL this year, which is winding down its season. And USA Today has mentioned him as a potential jump back to the NFL. Could Pittsburgh be in the mix? Here was USA Today's argument. Stribling only played in seven of the ten USFL games this regular season, but you wouldn't know it from his production. He averaged an INT per game with seven interceptions on the season, also had 16 tackles, two tackles for loss, and one sack on the season. He, was bas he has basically been the leader of the Stars defense, which was demonstrated in the games that he missed this season. An undrafted free agent out of Michigan back in 2017, Stribling has spent time with five different NFL clubs, uh, his last stint with the LA Chargers in 2018. He also played with the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the CFL and has had stops in the AAF and the XFL. We we'll, might do a whole video, by the way, on a potential USFL targets for the Steelers. It's a very tricky situation. Purely from his production in the USFL, yeah, he probably deserves a shot in a camp. But remember, players who are in the USFL have already shown they probably aren't good enough to make it in the NFL. These are guys fighting for a roster spot in the NFL. That's what you would expect out of Stribling, but sure, it's worth a shot. The problem you might run into is this. There's no off time. Stribling goes from playing seven in this case, but it could have been a 10-game season in June, in, you know, in May, etc. And now you've got training camp in July. And then you're going to have the entire season. So you don't have a single real off period to recover. So that's going to lead to bigger injuries. So the expectations, if you sign a USFL player, should absolutely be low. Is he better than James Pierre? Is he better than Justin Lane, Arthur Mallett? I'm not so sure. Is he better than Lyndon Stevens? You know, maybe. So if you want to bring him in, I'm not going to be upset about it in any capacity. But I do want to emphasize, as good as he was in the USFL, the expectations need to be adjusted. Uh, this is a lesser league in the NFL that's, you know, barely even the top-tier college players are in the USFL. So I think we have to be honest with how good he could be in the NFL. Those expectations should be pretty low. If you made it all the way to the end of today's Steelers video, thank you. We appreciate that, and we want to show you some love in the comments by liking, hearting your comment. If you made it to the end of this video, type here we go in the comments right now.